Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the news of Ashraf TV. Today's stories include Major General Yassin Ibrahim takes oath as the Minister of Defense. Health emergencies increase the period of internal movement to 3 p.m. 147 new cases of coronavirus and 12 deaths registered. Major General Yassin Ibrahim Yassin was sworn in Tuesday before the Chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan, as the new Minister of Defense. Present at the oath taking ceremony were the Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok and the Chief Justice Naimat Muhammad Abdullah and the Secretary General of the Transitional Sovereign Council, General Muhammad Al Ghali Ali Yusuf. In a statement to the press after taking oath, the Minister of Defense said that he worked in support and assistance to the brothers in the Council of Ministers by every effort, diligence, loyalty and honesty, inspired by the sacrifices of the martyrs of the glorious December Revolution and the patience of the patriotic people to achieve the goals of the constitutional document, the transitional period and the revolution. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, the spokesman of the Higher Committee for Economic Emergencies, Ambassador Omar Bashir Manis, has denied what was reported by some different media outlets about the resignation of the Chairman of the Higher Committee for Economic Emergencies. Manis affirmed that the Lieutenant General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalou, the Deputy Chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council and the Chairman of the Higher Committee for Economic Emergencies, is carrying his duties on the chairmanship of the committee and daily supervises the work of the subcommittees. Manis has called on all not to care about the rumours that were aimed for the confusion of the public opinion. The Higher Committee for Health Emergencies has announced the easing of the health curfew and lockdown measures in the state of Khartoum and the increase in the period of internal movement from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. with maintaining the rest of the procedures related to the curfew. The Deputy Chairman of the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies, Professor Sadiq Tawur, said at a joint press briefing with the Minister of Culture and Information, Faisal Muhammad Saleh, in Suna Forum, that the committee reached this decision after a deep deliberation on all the reports related to the situation of the pandemic. Tawur added that the decision on prevention of gatherings and the closure of bridges will remain, except for the licensed groups, in addition to the closure of the big markets, as well as a complete prohibition of passenger traffic between the states. The Federal Ministry of Health has announced today the registration of 147 new cases of infection with COVID-19, with 12 deaths and the recovery of 99 cases. The report of the Federal Ministry of Health indicated that the total of the examined samples amounted to 437 in the National Laboratory for Public Health, the Laboratory of the Blue Nile Institute, the Public Health Laboratory in Niala, and the Central Laboratory in the Red Sea State. The ambassador of the People's Republic of China in Khartoum, Mr. Ma Zinmin, has affirmed that his country's cooperation with the Sudan will continue to combat the corona pandemic, stressing that cooperation between the two countries will enable them to defeat the disease. During his address to the joint meeting between the delegations of the Chinese health experts currently in visit to the country and the Technical Committee for the Emergency Department of the Federal Ministry of Health, the ambassador indicated that China seeks to provide the best support to Sudan by stressing on the exchange of experiences between the two countries in this field. He conveyed greetings of the Chinese government and people to the government and the people of Sudan, appreciating Sudan's stance beside China in combating the corona pandemic recently. A women's group for street food vendors, the Multipurpose Women Cooperative Union, called on the Sudanese transitional government to provide the needed support for its members to face the negative impact of the coronavirus crisis. As a result of the social distancing measures implemented by the government to stop the spread of COVID-19, street food and beverage vendors, mainly women, lost many of their clients, but also they have to stay home to not encourage people to break the lockdown. The union leadership discussed the ways to support the 15,000 vendors in Khartoum state affected by the crisis during a meeting with the officials from the Ministry of Social Welfare and the Higher Committee of Health Emergencies on the 15th of March, 2020. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources, Engineer Dawalbeit Abdurrahman, said that all the country's water resources and dams are under the responsibility of the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources. 
During his inspection to Jabal Awliya Dam, accompanied by the leaders and the ministry's administration today, for the importance of facing the mechanical, administrative and manpower challenges facing the dam in accordance with the state's capabilities and the circumstance combating the corona pandemic, indicating the state efforts to provide work appropriate environment for workers. The director of the dam engineer Ramadan Adam Abdullah noted to the challenges facing the work at the dam, especially the mechanical rehabilitation cooperations, roads and workers. The Minister of Culture and Information, the government's spokesman Faisal Muhammad Saleh, expressed his regret for the lies and misleading news circulated on social media and some newspaper sites and work of the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies. Faisal said in Sunnah's forum that these websites and newspapers have had to be accurate and reliable in what they circulate and not to intentionally publish misleading news and reports, noting that the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies have only today took its decision on which it is committed to its work with organizational hierarchy. He indicated that the Health Emergency Committee is formed by decision from the Security and Defense Council to which it submits recommendation to the Security and Defense Council to determine the final decision. The member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Mohammed Hassan Taishi, has called for expanding the circle of participation for the active forces in the public work, raising awareness and contributing to spreading a culture of peace in Rihad al-Birdi locality. During his meeting with the local resistance committee in Rihad al-Birdi, South Darfur State, he stressed that the glorious December Revolution has provided a rare and historic opportunity that should be used for the building and development of the Sudan. He pointed to the importance of tight coordination and strengthening of ties and to unite efforts between the members of the resistance committees to be able to establish and consolidate the values of freedom and democracy. Security conditions are not met for the withdrawal of hybrid peacekeeping operation from Western Sudan region, said that four armed groups participating in the Juba-mediated peace process in Juba. In a statement extended to Sudan Tribune, Ahmed Tugudlisan, the chief negotiator for the groups of the Sudanese Revolutionary Front, SRF, participating in that fourth track, said that the UNAMID is needed to protect civilians due to the fragile security situation. He further said that a future peace agreement requires the UNAMID presence to take part in the implementation of the security arrangements. And now we remind you with the headlines. Major General Yassin Ibrahim takes oath as Minister of Defense. Health emergencies increase period of frontal movement to 3 p.m. 147 new cases of coronavirus and 12 deaths registered. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.